straightforward, very intuitive, so that uh, once you understand the idea, it should be very simple. But uh, I'll let you know what is required. Uh, let's start. Chapter four. So far, we have already learned the regression. Uh, we learned all those details. For example, regression in the first column, second column, third column, you know, beta has standard error, T ratio, P value, so on and so forth. You know, now we're going to move on to the case called the multivariate regression. Multivariate means we have more than one X. The issue right here is that if we have more than one X, then, you know, shall we include the additional variable into our regression or exclu exclude from a regression? Basically, yes or no. When you have something not sure about, the answer is, uh, shall we put into our regression or throw it away? For example, when you try to run the regression wage over right-hand side, probably you have uh, your education, probably a factor wage, right? But how about other variables such as, say, uh, how about gender? Male, female, does it affect your age? How maybe yes, but how about occupation? How about location? How about say you're good looking, bad looking? <laughs> so, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> maybe maybe it depends on your occupation, right? <laughs> and uh, how about the location, you, the city you live? <laughs> there are some factors I don't know. Then in this kind of situation, should I put into my regression? or throw it away, right? Then let's discuss case by case to see what happens to that case. Case one will be, you know, what if I put in my regression? Second way will be if I throw it out, out of my regression, right? Let's introduce uh, two terminologies. They are very easy. They are, the first one is over specification. Second one is under specification. Let's discuss one by one. The first one is, over specification, what do you mean by over? Over means more than necessary. In other words, for example, consider, suppose that the true model is y over x1. In other words, only x1 affects y. Only x1 affects your y. But in your model, besides x1, you also put x2. In other words, you include something Trash. You include some irrelevant, right? So maybe, maybe say good looking, bad looking doesn't affect your weight at all. But uh, but you include that variable into your regression. You supply more than necessary, right? So that we call over specification. So let's see what's the outcome of this over specification. Uh, the textbook did some proof, but we we do not require the proof. I'll directly tell you the conclusion. The conclusion actually very simple. First of all, first of all, short answer is uh, it doesn't matter. And so we're still correct. In other words, the true model is only X1 of X or Y. Your model, we put X1, X2, both of them. Short answer is uh, your beta one hat, beta two hat are still correct. Why? The intuition is uh, if the true model doesn't have X2, we can rewrite our true model by beta one times x1 plus zero times x2, right? The true coefficient of x2 is zero, right? In that case, in that case, you ask computer to run a regression. If the true value for beta two is zero, then basically computer is gonna give us beta two hat is something very close to zero, right? So that so that our beta two in your model, beta two hat will be very close to zero, right? Basically, you know, <laughs> in that case, if beta two hat very close to zero, then beta one hat must be very close to the true value beta one, right? That's why our conclusion is that in case of over specification, if you include something irrelevant, if you include some trash, short answer is a no big deal. We are still correct. Our beta hat is still correct. <laughs> so that's the short answer. Uh, not done yet, but uh, let's put uh, put aside for a second. So for the short answer for over specification is we are still correct. Beta beta hat, beta one hat, beta two hat are still correct. Beta one hat very close to the true value true beta one. Beta two hat will be very close to to true value zero. Right? That's the short answer. 
how about under specification? Under means uh, you supply less than necessary. In other words, for example, the true model, both x1, x2, both of them affects our y. But in your model, in your model, by mistake, you only put x1. In other words, you forgot x2, right? You didn't put x2 in your model. Then what happens to your, you know, to your model in case of under specification? Again, under specification means uh, you put less than necessary, right? You omit something by mistake. Uh, do you want to guess what happens in this case? <laughs> The short answer is uh, they'll be wrong. Beta one hat, beta two hat, they're wrong. <laughs> Are they smaller or larger than the true value? Uh, yeah, we have to discuss as the original value, two beta one, two beta two, they're positive or negative, right? <laughs> and also, you know, what, what has happened. But so far, short answer is, uh, short answer is, uh, your betas are wrong, beta hats are wrong. Beta one hat, beta two hat. Actually, based on the way I describe under specification, probably you already figure out, right? If you forgot to include x2, x2 is important variable, right? If you forgot to include x2, then short answer is that your result, beta one hat, beta two hat, they are wrong. They are, they'll be far away from the true value, right? So, so the short answer for under specification is that our beta hats, they are, they are buyers. We got a bias. They're for, you know different from the true true value. They're biased and also they're inconsistent. So by comparing the two, by comparing the two, so far you might you might get to the conclusion. Uh, the first case over specification. If you include something, even if it, something trash, something irrelevant, no mistake, right? Second case, if you forgot to include something then you run to mistake, you get a bias, right? If you run, you know, summarize the two, maybe it looks like uh, when you're not sure about something, then what we should, what we should do is uh, we should always include that one into our regression, right? So that we, so we can avoid making a mistake because, because you know, <laughs> you know if, you, if you forgot something, you, you're, you're gonna run into under specification, so you're wrong. If you include something irrelevant, no mistake, right? So that short answer is, uh, if you're not sure about something, just include into your regression, right? So this is correct, but only for the case you have a large sample size n. In other words, let's discuss a little bit. So far, just I told, just now I told you, uh, our specification, beta had a correct. Under specification, beta hat is wrong. You get a bias, right? So that you, you might run into the conclusion, the first case, the first case, over specification, this is, uh, we, we are always correct. In other words, if you're not sure about something, just include into our regression. Uh, that's so that we have a solution. You know, we solve the problem always, right? So it sounds too good to be true in the sense that you can always include something irrelevant with no cost, no no additional cost, it sounds too good to, to be true, right? So so that if you if you forgot something, you always make make mistake. But if if you include something trash, you include some irrelevant, no cost, you know, too good to be true. There must be some cost when you include trash variables into your into your regression, right? What's the cost of over specification? What's the cost of include some trash? I'll tell you the conclusion directly, which is uh, in terms of beta hat, we are still correct. In other words, in terms of first moment, we are still correct, we are still unbiased, right? But what's the cost? Cost is it, right? Second moment. Still remember what's the second moment? Second moment of beta hat. The variance, right? <laughs> in other words, when we include the trash variable into a regression, the first moment, all those beta hats, they're still correct. But the second moment, 
will be wrong in the sense of the variance, variance of beta one head, variance beta two heads will be bigger than what you had before. You get a variance will become bigger and bigger. They include more and more trash variables. So that so that if you say no cost, then too too good to be true. There must be there must be some some cost. They include some trash variable into your regression, right? <laughs> the cost is in terms of second moment, and so the variance will become bigger and bigger. Then you include more and more irrelevant stuff into a regression. And so what's the big deal of a large variance? Recall, for example, our t test, right? T t test t, t ratio will be beta hat divided by standard error, right? Standard error, basically the square root of variance. If your variance is too large, it means your standard error will be too large, right? It means your T ratio, the bottom, the bottom number standard error, then the too large, the T ratio will be too small. So small T ratio means, for example, it, it will be smaller than 1.96, right? So that they include more and more trash variables, then, you know, nothing significant. Everything has a large variance so that nothing has significant, nothing has a star afterwards, right? So that that's the cost of uh, over specification. So that let's summarize these two, two cases. Over specification, if you include something irrelevant in terms of first moment, you're still correct in the sense your beta hat are still unbiased, still consistent. But the cause is a second moment. In other words, the variance will be larger than before. In other words, your beta hats will be not efficient anymore. They'll be inefficient. In other words, the variance will be too big, right? And that's the cause. That's the over specification. So I wrote down, I wrote down the conclusion right here, larger than what we Second case, under specification. Under specification is that we forgot something. Uh, X2, for example, really affects your Y, but you forgot to put X2 into your regression, right? By forgot including something, you're gonna make a mistake. In other words, your beta head is, is wrong, right? Beta head is wrong, it means your first moment is already wrong. Your beta hat is, is biased, right? It is inconsistent. It means that even though your sample size, no matter how large it is, you're still wrong, right? So how about efficiency? Uh, short answer is uh, we don't care <laughs> because the first moment already wrong, <laughs> but beta hat already wrong, right? So that we do not discuss efficiency in, in the under specification case. In case of under specification, you know, since your beta head already wrong, you're still, you're already biased. You're already inconsistent. So that's the right answer. We don't, we don't discuss efficiency anymore, right? That's basically the trade-off between consistent, between consistency and efficiency. If you're not sure about something, if you always include into your regression, if you always over-specify, right? Then your beta head are always correct, but the variance will be too big you're gonna lose efficiency, right? Second case, the opposite. If you're not sure about it, if you always throw it away, if you always go jump into the under specification case, then you're gonna have a bias. You're gonna have a first moment problem, right? So that, that's why that's why I should answer. We don't want to always go to over specification. We don't want to always go to under specification. Later on, we're gonna learn some past called F-test to, to, to compare them to see, shall we really include the additional variable put into a regression or throw it away, right? So that if, if later on, we're gonna learn some tests to discuss uh, what shall we do you know, exactly. Uh, and that's the issue later on. So right here, uh, I want to show you a little graph. The gra title graph is uh, from a rhino to unicorn. So you see, that's our fat rhino. This is a unicorn, <laughs> so the <laughs> rhino is uh, <laughs> do some <laughs> workout on the treadmill, try to <laughs> try to <laughs> become a unicorn, right? <laughs> Why I put this kind of graph? That's exactly what's the true model. The true model is a unicorn. <laughs> Why? A unicorn is a mythical animal, right? Everybody will talk about a unicorn. Everybody knows that. How does a, you know, what does a unicorn looks like? But 
have you ever seen a unicorn? <laughs> of course, no, right? That's exactly the same story in terms of econometrics. Everybody talks about, suppose I'm running, you know, this is our true model. But, you know, have you ever seen a true model? <laughs> a true model is a unicorn. <laughs> Actually, you're going to never see such a true model. <laughs> you, you know, you are, when you, whenever you run the regression in your paper, in your research, you thought, uh, you know, I thought your model is the true model, <laughs> is a beautiful unicorn. But to the truth, your model is a fat unit right now, right? It's totally different from the, you know. So, so in reality, your model is by no means the true model. Your your model is by no means the beautiful unicorn. That's that's a difference between a true model is in your model. That's why some textbooks are plain. All models are wrong <laughs> because, uh, or almost all models wrong. Because uh, think about this: uh, how many different models can you think of? For example, if I want to run a regression, what kind of variable can I determine in my wage? How many variables can I think of? Uh, education, working experience, uh, gender, location, maybe good looking, bad looking, <laughs> you know, right? Include <laughs> there are many, many of them. If you further can calculate square terms, those polynomials, their interaction terms, they're almost infinity. There are so many different stuff I can think of to, to potentially they might affect my wage, right? True or false, do, do they really affect my wage? I don't know, right? <laughs> but uh, potentially there, I can think of infinity different models to, 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 to estimate the model, right? But, you know, out of, so many infinity different models, you simply pick one of them and you claim that's the true model. What's the chance of your model happens to be the true model? One over infinity, right? <laughs> that's zero. So that, that's why the chance for you to, to be, your model happens to be the true model, the chance of basically zero, right? <laughs> that's why some textbook says uh, all models are wrong. <laughs> but but, but uh, don't be too frustrated because uh, we have the second half of the sentence. The second half of the sentence says, but, you know, all models are wrong, but, some are useful. Some, you know, some models are useful, useful to us, even though we may not be our model. Your model may not be exactly the true model, but hopefully, close enough to the true model, so so that it, it will be useful enough for us to to capture the information. <laughs> what kind of relationship, right? So, <laughs> so that's basically the story. So, but our goal, basically, later on, our goal is that we. We need to try to further improve our regression model because our model by no means true model. We need further improve our model, maybe try different polynomials, maybe try nonlinear, maybe try you know interaction term, maybe try different subsamples, try different method, try to getting closer and closer to the true model. Right? That's basically the idea. Um, but anyway, that's that's the story, true model, which is a unicorn. <laughs> Let's further introduce uh, one more issue from this mod. Um, let's further talk about adjusted R square. You know, um, what's the adjusted R square? Adjusted R square is very, very similar to the original R square we introduced before. Uh, Original uh, R square we learned before, which is a ratio, variance of y hat divided by variance of y, right? It means, for example, suppose R square is 80%. We say 80% information y could be explained by using x, right? So now we're going to move on to talk about something called adjusted R square. We're going to adjust R square. So that let's see why we need adjust R, you know, the original R square. You know, and then let's talk about the property of this adjust R square. First of all, first of all, you know, the problem of the original R square is when you put more and more x variables into into your regression, the original R square, the original R square never decrease, never decrease. Then you put more and more variables into a regression. 
original R square never decreases. In other words, your original R square will be either increased or at least the same, even though you know include some something totally irrelevant, even though include some change into your regression. The original R square will never decrease; they will always increase or at least the same. That's why when we have multiple regression, more than one axis, we cannot use the original R square to compare different regressions because because the more axis you have, the larger or, or you know your original R square, right? So that's that's why we have to propose a new new method, new index to compare which model. Is, is better. For example, the first model may be x1, x2. The second model, x1, x2, x3, uh, x4, right? So that I want to compare which one is better. Now I want to use adjust R squared to see which one is uh, which one is better. So that uh, we suggest that this uh, adjust R squared. Original R squared variance of y hat divided by uh, variance y. For example, suppose, suppose this is 80. Suppose that this is a 100, 80 divided by 100, so that 80%, right? Equivalently, you can you can calculate it as so one minus 20%. For example, for example, y hat suppose take 80 per 80, then the residuals must be 20, right? So so that equivalently you can write down 20 divided by 100, which is 20%, and then one minus 20%. Equivalently, that's also 80%, right? So that either either directly use 80 divided by 100 or calculate 20 divided by 100 and then use one minus 20%, right? So that's the formula for the, our original R square. Now we're gonna modify our R square by adjust a little bit. We adjust this. We put, we put a new term right here, which is a, a minus one divided by n minus k, so that we, we multiply by this ratio right here, n minus 1 divided by n minus k. n is the sample size. k, what's k? k is how many parameters do we have? For example, we have alpha, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Suppose you have a beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, in other words, x1, x2, x3 in your regression. Then you have three betas, right? Don't forget alpha, so that if you have four parameters, so that the k is four, right? Three beta and one alpha, right? So so that uh, this this ratio will be, for example, suppose your n is 1,000, n minus one will be 1,000 minus one, that'd be 99, right? So right here, 1,000 minus four will be 996, right? So that's the adjustment. So, so basically, the, the reason why we adjust this uh, ratio right here is a C. We have K right here. K measures how many axes do we put into our regression, right? So that, first of all, you can verify this. Then K is large. Then K is large. Adjusted R square, and it becomes smaller. You can verify this very easily. For example, say, uh, Where's my little arrow? Then k is large. Then k is large. N minus k. N minus k must be small, right? N minus k must be small. And uh, N minus k is at the bottom. So this total ratio, this total ratio must be Oops, let me put it right here. Must be big, right? But don't forget, we have a one minus this ratio, right? So that overall, adjusted R square will be small, right? So that we verified, we, we just verified, we just verified when K is large, so that overall, adjusted R square will be small, right? So that this is a first effect. Adjusted R square, penalize large K. Then k is getting bigger and bigger, and so uh, adjust r square becomes smaller and smaller, right? So that's the first effect, which is uh, adjust r square penalize k. Then k increases, adjust r square decreases, right? So that's why 
you know, if you use adjusted R square, if, if you include some trash into a regression, your K will be too large so that your adjusted R square will be small so that your regression gonna tell you it's not a good measure, right? So second property, I told you, after adjustment, adjusted R square is no larger than R square. No larger means either the same or smaller. Right? You can verify this very easily by yourself. For example, this ratio right here, n minus one divided by n minus k, for example, for example, it's a nine and nine divided by nine and six, right? So this ratio is uh, you know close to one, but slightly larger than one, right? So that you can verify one minus uh, this uh, ratio times uh, that term. So that after adjustment, after adjustment, adjusted R square will be will be smaller than this guy. Right, you can verify this by yourself. Very easy. So that the conclusion is that uh, adjust R square should it be will be smaller, right? Smaller or the same. In other words, in a special case, in a special case, and so they could be the same. Original one, original one, and the adjusted one. In a special case, so they two could be the same. In what kind of situation they two will be the same? Can you figure out? Uh, but usually k is larger than one because alpha, as long as we have alpha, right? K is, you know, we already have one. For example, if you have, uh, you know, if you have x1 only, then alpha and beta one, so that k will be already two. So k usually at least a two, two, three, four, so on so forth. I'll tell you directly. If n is really, really large, if n goes to infinity, right? If uh, if n is 10, then maybe that's 10 minus 1, 10 minus k, right? If n is 1,000, 1,000 minus 1, 1,000 minus 4, they're small, difference well, very small, right? 99 divided by 96, right? If, if n is infinity, infinity minus 1, infinity minus 4, no big difference. That's infinity divided by infinity, right? So that uh, so that short answer is of a simple size, really, really large. Then this uh, adjustment or not, no difference or not, and so become the same. So that's why conclusion right here. If adjustment adjusted R square is no larger than original one, in other words, smaller or the same. In what kind of situation will be the same? If your sample size goes to infinity then they too will be the same. Okay. Finally, finally, original R square is positive, at least at zero, right? I, you know, because it percentage, percentage, either 20%, 80%, the sounds worse, right? It's between zero and one. Original R square is usually larger than zero, or at least at zero, right? But after adjustment, the adjusted R square could be negative, could be negative. Just now we mentioned after adjusted, it will be smaller than before, right? If the original R square is uh, is a very small, for example, if suppose a original R square larger than zero but very close to zero, suppose it's something like a zero point zero one, right? After a plan after adjustment, you know, even smaller, so that could become negative. So that uh, so that. Uh, for example, in some situation, if you see computer give you a negative adjusted R square, you know, it'll be, oh, look like a computer got a mistake. No, it could be, could be. It's It happens in the case when the original one is very small, then after adjustment could become negative. Right, original one cannot be negative, at least at zero, right? But after adjustment uh, could be negative. So that's the properties uh, uh, of our gesture. In our regression, it's right here. For example, original R square is uh, 0 0.29, about 29%, 0.2913. Adjusted R square in our example, 0 0.2753. See, smaller than the original one, right? <laughs> Makes sense, like we pointed out, after adjustment, it will be usually smaller than the original one, right? And they become the same if a sample size really, really large. In our case, our sample size is only 46, 46 states, right? So, so that's why, you know, there, there, there is a difference that will be smaller. And uh, 
that's everything we require from uh, this chapter, uh, chapter four. So, so far, uh, uh, sorry, the midterm so far required from this chapter. So let me, let me summarize what we learned so far and talk about our midterm. So far, uh, we learned uh, some chapters, uh, 